Not that box. That box is just staying like that. I am being completely serious here when I say this. You know me, guy. What I say is what I say, and what I say is what I mean. I was completely done with the large-scale RCs. Now, I'm not talking about my RCs that I've already got, meaning like I was just done with the whole looking at, it was just done, I was done. Point blank, I was done. Well, that was until that was until this stupid thing, man. So anyways, this is RC Guy Garage, and we're gonna crack open this box right here. We're gonna crack open this box. Dude, I'm so serious. I really was done, man. I guess I saw no benefit with the larger scale RCs because the larger scaleness of all of it just requires just that much more. It also kind of rejuvenated my desire to want to, my desire to go ahead and finish up the backyard track. Guy, what do you mean finish up? Didn't you start that backyard track like years ago? Yeah, guy. And like today and this entire week, March weather has kind of uh, messed things up. So let's just open up this box and see what you get inside the brand new fifth scale. Yeah, guy, I said it. Stinking fifth scale Red Cat Racing Vigilante. Pretty pumped about this thing. I've had it for a couple of weeks now. It's finally time to open it up and see what's inside the box, man. It does look like the box is... Uh pretty good did suffer some damages from shipping uh, it's not going to be a problem or it shouldn't be a problem with the way things are done nowadays all right so there we go that's what it looks like So this is the Red Cat Racing Vigilante. It's a one-fifth scale brushless electric 4x4 four-wheel drive monster truck. 1250 KV, 4985 size motor, heat sink and fan, 5 millimeter shaft, 18 tooth mod 1 pinion, 160 amp all-weather waterproof and dustproof 3S. Yeah, it's funny, 3S. Why would you run this thing on 3S? But hey, we'll try it. <laughs> no, he won't. 8S ready. See, this is the stuff right here that kind of gets me. It says... 3S2 8S ready. Now you read into the ready word, and sometimes the ready word can mean a couple of different things. Different RC manufacturers say that something is capable or ready. So does that mean that it can take 8S and that it's kind of, yeah, dude, I don't know. I really don't hope this is the way that uh, Red Cat's going. But anyways, it's got the Red Cat branded Hexfly large scale servo. So it's a 70 ki uh, kilogram, all weather, waterproof and dust proof with metal gears, bearing supported, double shear servo horn right there. So it does look like we've got a bearing on the little section there which must like go into something on the chassis like the uh, Traxxas X-Max does. And that's the other thing too, is a lot of people try to, a lot of people try to compare something like this to an X-Max. And I feel like this is probably going to be bigger than an X-Max. Upgrades included, 7075 aluminum steering knuckles. So a steering knuckle, 7075 aluminum rear hub. Probably a good thing because what that does is this is the bearing support. So these pieces right here are normally changed out on large scale RCs once you start getting issues in these locations. And it looks like Red Cat went ahead and decided to go ahead and take care of that situation. So large outer bearings, it's a 12 by 24 by 6. Large inner bearings, a 20 by 32 by 7. So the assumption is, is that the bearings are the same front and rear. Open lug off-road tire with a satin chrome classic wheel. I think I'm going to like the looks of that personally. It also has a very familiar kind of like lug pattern of a tire that I primarily use on just about every RC. So this is the fifth scale version of this. I think that's probably going to be meant to because as long as they've kind of like thickened the rubber, I mean, these tires, there's nothing wrong with these. These are good for how I use them. But dude, this literally looks like it's the MT all-terrain version of the tire that I absolutely love. These are Red Cat Racing Kaijus. So these just look like fifth scale Kaijus. 
I understand this is probably a rendering and I do know that this chassis is split. Normally I don't try to watch other videos only because I just don't want to get, uh, I don't want to get my thoughts like infiltrated on what to expect or what not to expect. But so far from what I've seen, the thing has been a, a beast, dude. The thing has been a very resilient truck. So I've seen videos from Thunder RC and I've seen also Exo Cage. If you haven't seen those videos on this truck, I suggest stop this video, go watch their stuff this is just an unboxing to see what you get inside the box because i didn't watch those videos i watched the other videos because i wasn't interested in watching nothing so anyways this is how i do it but it's funny how the rendering here does not show the split in the chassis and it almost it almost appears as though these are plates but they're not so in the rendering in the 3d rendering it is a solid chassis which i I think it's kind of a uh, little misleading. But anyways, whatever. High strength suspension arms with 7075 aluminum. Yeah, we already saw that. So it's got 7075 aluminum steering components. So the steering knuckles, not the hub, not the actual, it's the knuckle, not the actual, uh, this hub portion. The rears though, the rears are metal. It does look like the steering. So CNC aluminum front steering, knuckles and 7075 CM, oh, wait a minute. Is that aluminum or not? See, it's only saying that. It's just saying the steering and the hub. All right. Well, I think that is metal. 24 millimeter big bore aluminum coilover shocks with adjustable strap, which is kind of cool. Has a limiting strap. Metal differential gears, plastic housing with a metal gear. They look pretty chunky. High ground clearance, very similar to another vehicle. Kind of almost has like a, uh, almost looks like it has a slash look. Looks like a slash, because it's open. So, yeah, guy. The X-Max has more of a, um, like a, a, a section here that is covered that seems to hide, but maybe having it wide open like this allows debris to kind of fall out. But you get a good look at the 70-75 uh, hubs. Looks like we got some more metal right here. We got some struts going to a center brace. Clamping style front and rear body mounts. Roof skids with internal roof support. So it has an internal cage structure. It's got a uh, roll bar in the back. And it looks like the bed also has a type of protection. Front and rear bumpers. It does have pads to support the truck. At least I think that's what I'm seeing. I could be wrong but it looks like it's pads. And then again, it looks like I'm wrong because this just shows a post with body pins. So I could be wrong on that. The side of the box just shows the front side and rear side of the truck and vigilante battery and charger not included and a bunch of words that we're not gonna read. Oh, dude, check that out. Designed in Arizona, but made in China, but still designed in Arizona. That's pretty cool. Don't remember seeing stuff like that. This side of the box just showing a front on section of the truck. It looks pretty tough. It's like that uh, early 80s uh, Chevy pickup is what I what I'm seeing. It's kind of like resembles it. It's not like the uh, it's not like a licensed body or anything, but that's kind of what Red Cat does. Red Cat does a little bit of funkiness, but it's got the cowl induction hood. It's got uh, fake grill, fake headlights, fake all that stuff. Rear on shot. Looks pretty built. Looks like it's got some long travel suspension. Glad to see that. Kind of looks like a uh, wide kit is already installed on it. If you want to say a wide kit. Top down and then we got a side on view of what the truck looks like. This side of the box, wheel well openings. Might be in like a silver or chrome. Got some stickers right here. Ah, it does. Okay, so send it, stuntman. So it does have license plates, which are kind of neat. Anti-theft equipped. Yeah, just a bunch of garbage that you... Oh, uh, some people like the stickers. Oh, it's got door handles. So it's got uh, stick-on door handles. No mirrors, nothing like that. Almost kind of would have been cool, but if being a basher, it's really not needed. Included, fifth scale brushless electric full wheel drive monster truck, 2.4 radio system, and then requires four AA batteries for a transmitter, a 6S to 8S times 2 3S quantity 2 by 4S LiPo battery and charger. So this is kind of funny how on here, it obviously does say it's just basically capable 3S to 8S ready, but on here it is saying point blank that this is a 6S to 8S truck. 
Kind of weird that they put the 3S on there. Like, I mean, I get it. It can run on 3S, but... And you're also going to need a battery charger. Pretty typical. Usually when you see something like this, I don't know if you're seeing what I'm seeing. So this truck has been opened. So there's a sticker right here that's been open. There's three stickers on this box. It looks like for some strange reason, this box was opened for some weird reason. And I don't understand why. Same thing on this side, you can see an overlay of three separate stickers. So does that mean that they did something at the factory? Maybe they came across an issue with this truck and they went ahead and fixed it before before release? If they did that, that'd be a cool thing. So what you get, oh, that smell is weird. It's got a funky smell to it. All right, so we got a box right here. Probably has tires or something in it. Yeah, it's got the tires in it. So you got one tire here. It's got a nice metal insert. It's got that, uh, people will say this is this is Traxxas. The thing is though, is it's, it's not. It's also Red Cat. So here's what I mean when I say um, Traxxas, right? So Traxxas obviously has that like a uh, little keyed section. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's got a specific kind of way that Traxxas locks in their hexes, which is very smart. Think about how old this tech is. Now, here's a Red Cat wheel from the TRMT8 BES or B6S, whatever the heck it was. I don't know if you could see in there. But inside there, they also have that same style of hex that you're not going to find on this wheel, but that you do find on the Traxxas. So the question is, is who copied who here? It's a very, oh yeah, dude. Nah, that feels nice. Nah, that feels like a nice tire. So checking to see if the tire was vented and the tire itself is not vented. The rim is vented, but the tire is not. I don't think I like that idea. So I will be venting these tires and blocking off the holes. I think it's kind of weird with a brand new RC like this and with a lot of companies, especially like Arma and I believe Traxxas now, going with the vented tires. And if you see on here, I've been venting all of my tires and then blocking off the holes inside. Got a bag here. So it looks like we've got a 24 millimeter wrench. Looks like we've got a set screw, a couple of antenna wires, and obviously the uh, serrated 24 millimeter um, lug nuts for the truck. Stick is, and it looks like a Red Cat quick start guide. So, and a QR code. So even Red Cats go in the QR code way. So I was curious what this uh, thing here was. So all I can do is back out of here. Can I back out of here? Yeah, I'm doing a screen record. What am I doing here, guy? Oh. QR code, go to the red the thing there, red cat. Oh, dude. So we've got a, uh online PDF manual. I like that. Ah, here we go, dude. <laughs> Here's some information that we want right there. Nice. Pretty cool. I like that. I do actually appreciate certain things that they've been doing with these uh, PDF uh, QR code. Look at this, man. This is mint, dude. You have this literally in your pocket or technically on your... Well, it is in your pocket because it's on your phone. I wonder if all the same stuff is on this. Look, let's see if you could QR code the QR code. <laughs> More tires, more tires. I do like the way that rim looks. See, I don't mind the aluminum uh, wheel look. It's like a um, brushed aluminum wheel look. It's nice. I like it. Damn thing, man. All right. How 
all my cutters. Close enough. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> what zip ties? I thought I was just a suspension, dude. That zip tied and... Man, they didn't want that thing going anywhere. That is a pretty sharp looking truck. All right. Oh, look underneath, there's your split chassis. This thing has got some beef and spice. So this is what the truck's looking like here. Body pins. It's kind of a little funky, but... It's almost uh, like they should have had tethers with this thing. Kind of would have been cool to have a tether. I wonder if like an Arma tether system will work out with this. So there's that uh, flat plate backside here. Just got to rotate them. Good size clips. Like the, we got the remote right there inside the body. So we do have, uh, damn, it's got body plate protection. And it's also got like little pads with Lexan. It's a pretty smart idea. Body posts can be adjusted, raised and lowered. So it looks like we're loose body posts here. Same front and rear. So looking at this, this is a Hobbywing Max 6. Big, chunky, gigantic 1250 motor. Massive cooling fan, man. Look at that thing. Shocks, big, beefy. Looks like we do have a jounce bumper. Maybe we'll have uh, no breakage. Emulsion style cap. The set button. Look at that. The set button. This say it's a captured switch. I like this idea. The switch seems a little offset. Oh, it moves around. Oh, all right. But it's got an indent or a, um, yeah, the switch is kind of tucked down and in there, the uh, little set switch. So you can't press it inadvertently. So we've got uh, the XT90s, which I'll have to snip off or go ahead and just put adapters on there. We've got an offset big chunky servo right over here. Drive shaft tunnel right there with the honeycomb. It's got a screw there that attaches to something. Big long motor wires. Massive 50 millimeter fan, man with a heat sink that wraps that thing. We got the triple red cat straps, which we'll be getting rid of two of those. Three for me aren't necessary. Got some foam pads with bumpers in there. Spur and pinion cover. Does look like they're separate. Looks like one can come off from the other. The steering is not 70-75. It's just plastic. Looking at that, look at that. Those are some big knuckles, dude. Big steering knuckles. Nice looking hubs in the back. Man. We do have uh, adjustable suspension positions, both front and rear. Right now it's set to the lowest setting. So we got, looks like five and a half, five and a half or 5.5 millimeter shafts or axles. Anyways, the big thing about this truck is the fact that its weight, its weight comparison compared to other fifth scales, this definitely is a lighter style truck, especially when you're talking like a Creighton or an Outcast. The Creighton and the Outcast is getting some massive weight from the big, huge chassis that the thing has to run. So, looking at, looks like seven millimeter i think it's seven millimeter shock shafts i believe looks like seven to me five six seven seven millimeter shock shafts kind of almost wish that they would stop doing this but it does give them a shear point or a break point they always do these like little adjustable things here red cat just happens to I guess want to stick or stay with this style and the wonderment is if this is going to be a breaking point hopefully not it is a shear point but in some of their drops these have been these have been a very sore or weak spot but hopefully with the beef and spice that they got here hopefully it's not going to be an issue it does have 
little capped sections here and it feels like yeah those could be wired up so these can have leds there you go arizona dude i like that grand canyon state vigilante that's pretty cool i like the fact that it does that nice big big plate all right well looking at this thing shock towers stinking beefy or at least not the tower itself but the pad where the shocks connect wonderment is well you know what it does have those limiting straps so who knows but it's a composite kind of uh plastic material that's what i think i'm seeing here these are not adjustable i don't think screwed right into the center tower tower connects on to the underside of the truck Damn, look at all those. Get that tiny little receiver box, man. I do like Red Cat's deal with the receiver box. So, the receiver box is not waterproof. Oh, look at this thing. That thing's just flopping around in there. That doesn't seem smart. So, it's only a two-channel thing here. Well, that doesn't seem smart, dude, to have the thing just flopping around in there. But it's not waterproof. Maybe the receiver itself is, but damn, that receiver's tiny. But it's not a waterproof box. Might be water-resistant-ish, but it's not waterproof. It's a good-sized servo. Wiring. I think the wiring's probably, I guess, average. I mean, there's not much you can do, I guess to tidy things up but i would have liked to have seen maybe the wiring i don't know i guess there's really nothing you can do dude, when you think about it such a big vehicle how they have things here um having the wire exposed like that i don't think i like that maybe that's why they gave you longer antenna tubes so you can go ahead and i always for some reason like to feel like this needs to be covered and the truck body obviously is going to give it plenty of room for that so wait a minute the thing already has door handles why did they give you extra ones well for like a four door <laughs> ah maybe they're going to come out with an suv version <laughs> i don't know dude i am psyched though i definitely am psyched all right so flipping the truck upside down that's the only thing that i don't like about that is the fact that you put a lot of stress on that mount that center mount so it would have been nice if somehow this center mount was pinned because if the center mount was pinned you could pull the pins pull the mount and then when you need to work on the truck this is not in the way so if you need to do upside down work man you're taking this off it's probably the smart way to go but it would have been nice if these were pinned you know otherwise like i said when you're flipping it over see what's going on here you're gonna end up snapping that thing dude that's kind of dumb so here's the division in the chassis that you don't get to see on the 3d rendering that they got there so it's this is definitely a stinking division it's keyed right here on these little side steps They've got a center spine here, or a uh, cover piece that's kind of attaching everything together. Inside of here, uh, yeah, you can see the split right there. It's got like two, it's got like a rounded over piece. Not sure what that is. Oh, it's got a 7075 motor mount too. Or at least, I'm assuming that's what it is. So, matches the same kind of coloring. Kind of, sort of. 
So anyways, the more important thing will be taking this thing out for a rip. The weather's killing me right now because we're in that, you know, March kind of stuff where the very beginning of March, it was insane, dude. We've had nothing for a winter in New England. They say like uh, March is in like a lion, out like a lamb, I think is what they say. Dude, it's the exact opposite. The thing came in like a lamb and is going out a lion. So... We had some pretty nasty weather the past couple of days. So this company right here, Xtar. Xtar, this is the L8. L8 means eight batteries can charge at the same time. These are rechargeable batteries. So we're looking at each cell. This is, I like how this thing is done. So it even has a finger hole. It's got a finger hole here to be able to push out the batteries. Really nice. Anyways, uh, these XTR or XTAR batteries, XT, XTR, these are 4150 milliwatt hour batteries or 2500 milliamp hour batteries. Rechargeable lithi lithium ion, unique low voltage indicator. I don't know what the heck that means. So I don't know what it means by a unique low voltage indicator. So I have to see what that means uh, on there, but this company sent these batteries out. They're obviously going to fit inside of here. So let's toss these bad boys in here. Here's your X-Tar thing there. So I got the batteries in there. Dude, I really want to know what the heck this is for. It's driving me nuts. What is this for? So we've got a fourth channel here, which is a three position center. So one, two, three, or one, two, zero. LED. I mean LED. Oh, for that? All right. So we've got the red indicator looking for obviously the truck. It does have steering reverse, throttle reverse, a bind button, steering trim. You know what? I actually don't mind this. I still kind of wish they had the cover. So the other Red Cat radios, the other Red Cat radios, I really liked. Oh. You tell me. Ah, crust. See, don't leave your stupid batteries inside. You know what? I don't remember batteries going bad like this before. Dude, look at that. See what happens? Now I'm going to have to clean that off. Well, whatever. But anyways, what I did like about this, obviously it had the dials. So you had steering trim, throttle trim, and your dual rate. So this has a steering endpoint adjustment. It does not have a rate. So what was nice was with these, you could dial the rate back. Because it's a dual rate. Same thing, bind on the top. But these were just two channel radios. That's for the X4. Camo X4. So this is the RTX 4C, which is just a four channel. And that is what that's for. That's weird. Why the heck would you need that? Why do you need a why do you need a light on the front? Maybe like in the dark. <laughs> I guess you could use the light to look at stuff. I guess you know what? Maybe that's not a bad thing, dude. You can give you a, a stinking built-in flashlight. <laughs> all this was dude this was just cracking this thing open checking it out seeing what was inside the box and i think i'm gonna be very happy especially seeing what i've seen with thunder rc and uh exo cages video again i try not to watch other content but seeing what they put out those two guys know how to take a large scale RC and really put it through his paces and i've so far what i've seen i'm, I'm pretty happy with so yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm psyched about this thing. I really am. <laughs> this thing is beef and spice, man. And I like what Exo Cage did. Exo Cage changed out the motor for, I think, a shorter, fatter can hobby wing motor and uh, kept the same ESC from what I've seen. And the thing turned into an absolute absolute animal, dude. And I think, um, I think Thunder RC went up what is the opinion? So it's got an 18 tooth, and I think he went up to like a 20 tooth, I think. I, I can't remember. 
So if you haven't seen those videos with Thunder RC and Exo Cage, go check them out. I will have obviously my own running videos, but they've already got the content out there. Go check it out. See if this truck is something that you want. As soon as I saw the fact that Red Cat dropped this thing, I ordered it that day, man. It was just like, dude, I was so done with fifth scales. What about you?